Okay, um, <clears throat> we could have a couple more joiners over the next five, 10 minutes, but I think we can get going. The only people here who are not uh, nominally Irish are Krishnan Anurban, who have been talking to me long enough, they might even have picked up a brogue, and Eric, who's lived here long enough. Do you call yourself an Irishman yet? I, I don't know anymore what I call myself now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here longer than I have, and so I guess I, it does make me some, somewhat Irish. A, a little bit Irish. Welcome yeah. to the fold. And we're converting Anirban and Krishnan today. They will be honorary yeah. Irishmen for, for, <laughs> forever more. Yeah. Yep. Now, so where are they joining happened? from? My Irish connection goes uh, about 30 years ago. Uh, that's when I started drinking whiskey. So... <laughs> <laughs> Krishna, you, you just answer. took that that's thing away from me, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, that, well, I mean, Bushmills has been a favorite in my bar for a long time. And of course, you guys are absolutely brilliant when it comes to writing poetry. So, uh, yeah, that's that's my Irish connection from afar. <laughs> I don't know if there's anybody in this group who's going to quote some Irish poetry. Any volunteers for that? No? The wink and elbow language of delight. That's about the only thing I remember from soundings. I think it was Kavanagh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, a mile a road of which I am king of stones and bugs and every bloody thing. That, and now I'm tapped out now. I'm afraid that's as much as I remember. <laughs> One good well thing done. about Kavanagh's well poetry, done. it was short. Yeah. <laughs> Suit, suited people yes. like me is basically what you're trying to say, Owen, but that's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah. <laughs> the capacity of a, of a slug. I, I retain three lines from, from all of soundings, and here I am. <laughs> Brilliant. And now we've got Alan and Catherine with us as well from the Innovate Island leadership. So Eric asked where our other supposedly non-Irish guests today are from. Krishnan, would you care to tell us where you are at the moment? Um, I'm based out of Chennai in uh, southern India, um, one of those hotter places, warmer places, let me put it. The world is hot these days, uh, one of the warmer places. Um, about uh, 30 years of post-education experience now. Um, I'm a, wanted to be a scientist. I ended up being a consultant and uh, I've been... Uh, I, I used to work for Ford, and that's when I, and uh, Castrol, that's when my British, th those are the British connection. So, yeah, and and here I am uh, connected with Ian four years ago when we were part of the, uh, from the uh, Innovation 360 team. And so, so my clients are predominantly innovation, growth, and uh, transmission clients. Those are the types of people that I work with. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Krishnan. And, and I'm a mountaineer, so I spend any time I don't do this, um, you can find me in the Indian Himalayas. It's a great contrast between the heat of Chennai and then the fresh air of the Himalayas. Absolutely. Anurban, where are you today? Oh, um, I actually just uh, came back to KL um, after almost about three three weeks now. But anyway, I had a family emergency, so I am in KL today. Um, I have uh, about 20 odd years of experience, but it's a diverse experience. I have been more or less a product guy, a go to market guy. Innovation is something which I started doing about, about a decade ago. Um, again, um, between Oyen and Krishna and myself, our common connection is Innovation 360. Um, my clients include largely telecom uh, telecom firms uh, because that's also been my domain expertise for a very long time. Um, and new business on on developing products on on a, a few clients on scenario planning, et cetera, et cetera. So yep, that's me. Brilliant. Thanks for that. Now we've got two other leaders from the Innovate Island Leader Group here, Catherine and Alan. So I'm ready to, to do the formal, well, not very formal, but the introduction for Krishnan on the topic in a second. Catherine or Alan, anything you wanted us to dive into today or are we just run ahead? Um, 
not not in any particular. I I am I'm here because I I haven't a clue. This is this sometimes we cover topics that I might have something to participate in. Today is a whole learning journey for me now, so I'm excited to be here. And I guess that's the essence of our Friday chats. You never know where the knowledge is going to come from. You never know what parts of the corner of the world we can all use, what learnings we have to share. And that's the essence of our group. Um, some days we talk total nonsense. Other days we actually learn something. But you know what? It all goes into the pot and comes up with hopefully with, with bigger thinking and lots of collaboration. So thank you for joining us today. And I'm excited to hear what you've got to share with us. Thank you. Alan, last words, yours, and then um, over to Mr. Naganathan. I'm I'm very much looking forward to it. I, I have a long kind of a career doing various bits and pieces, but my very first innovation role, I was hired and worked directly for an Indian gentleman called Rahul Verma from Amritsar. And I learned Jugard on my first week in the job and a very large Indian team in Citibank's innovation lab and worked very closely with a lot of Indian colleagues. So yeah, it's a concept that I really have, have, have seen in action in all sorts of different big and small ways. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just fascinated to hear what you bring to it. Yeah, so delighted. Brilliant. Then I will very quickly do an introduction and give the floor to Krishnan. And again, thanks Krishnan for accepting the invitation to talk to us. We we love these sessions and you, I think you can see why. Um, so Krishnan is really a big mountains fan and I, I pretend he's an ABBA fan. Um, we, we did we did go to the ABBA Museum in, in Tokyo, in, in Stockholm together. It was quite an experience. I nearly killed him trying to get around the city, the city on the, the e-scooters. But he is really, really a cricket fan. And I'm surest to hear from Krishnan when India or Ireland have beaten England in any sport, but particularly cricket. So <clears throat> that's something we have in common. He's also, by the way, a very good singer. Uh, and he's a great friend of mine, a hugely experienced consultant. And he has crossed the world culturally, technologically. The Innovation 360 is a thing we have in common, but the McKinsey background is really interesting. One of our other leaders, uh, Krishnan, is, his name is Charlie. So when I explained that you're a McKinsey uh, alumnus, he said, well, I'm not sure if we're going to forgive him for that. So, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm never going to forgive myself for joining McKinsey. Yeah. But you've you've crossed the divide. And as you said to me yourself when we first met, your best year ever as a consultant was when you focused on innovation, when you got rid of the McKinsey mindset, which is an amazing thing to hear. And that informed a lot of my thinking in, in, in recent years. Now, one other thing that Krishnan is doing, it, it, you know, we can't advertise here, but I think it's useful to know. Krishnan has been working on a innovation project maturity model. Now, he shouldn't be selling to us. But it might be interesting to see whether that's something we can use, learn from, or help him learn what works better. And maybe that'll come into the chat in the second half of, 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 of this hour. Okay, so let's have a quick think about this topic. It's simple, it's really broad, but as Catherine said, it's let's make of this in a chat whatever we can. Not just Jugad is the tagline, it's you know, what do India and Ireland have in common? How might I compare thee? Or more probably more valuable how might we learn from each other what do you do with the place where might you go where there's 1.3 billion potential innovators well, what's the comparison like with the world's most successful destination for foreign direct investment are the opportunities the challenge the same is what works the same in india uh, as in ireland and we've got the example of jugad which we need a bit of an explanation a couple of examples probably the India stack, which Alan also knows quite well, is a really ex a count interesting counterexample. And I did tease in the post for today that unintended consequences for sweets and candy is an important part of the story, which I hope Krishnan will, will, will touch on. On that note, Krishnan, it is over to you. The floor is yours. Continue. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Uh, very, very interesting. The, uh, the when we uh, chose this topic it was because I made a I shared a post about the the boiled candies the boiled sugar candies market in India crashing they were growing they were set to grow about uh, 18 percent and they are almost flat and the reason for that was that the one of the largest market for all of these guys were small shops you know what we call as the uh, mom and pop stores that line up any street in india where 
people would give these candies as change in exchange for, uh, rather than for the small uh, small uh, small uh, uh, denomination currencies they would typically cost about a rupee which is which is um, which is a, uh, actually one british uh, less than one british cent uh, so so and then they started investigating why this has happened and then everyone realized that actually this market was built by all of these guys as a form of a jugaad you know uh, and they actually invented this as a currency these candy sweets unintentionally you need to provide people change and what do you do give something that is useful that can be given to kids and so on and so that's how this market got built up and there was a huge there were packaging that was designed for such a thing there were there were uh, 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 there were marketing in, uh, sales efforts that were designed for this so you would find in most of these shops small plastic uh, pet containers in which they would sell them they would sell 100 of these in small packs individual packs so so it was actually something repurposed and jugaad is that actually it is you find something that is repurposed to deliver something and it comes from our mindset of uh, uh, the early eight, uh, the uh, before the 90s, when we were a uh, economy that was struggling, insulated economy, we had shortage of things, and that's when a lot of these happened because people didn't have enough resources. So what did you do? You repurpose other things for doing things. So so that's how it evolved. But why is that connection today? Because what India has done is we have probably got the world's best payment mechanism. It's called the Unified Payment Interface. It's something that was developed by the government as a payment ex exchange mechanism uh, for uh, for uh, all sorts of transaction. You can make transactions which are very nominal. There's no cost for the payer and there's no cost for the provider. The entire cost is absorbed by the government. The idea was to make to do with uh, the uh, uh, make everything clean. So they wanted accounting. So it became brought in transparency. The black economy, the black money, as wanted, they wanted it to be destroyed. They wanted every transaction to be through banking. This payment interface today, the government is hoping that we will have a billion transactions per month. Billion transactions a month. And every every tech company has a solution for this payment interface. So there's an interface and everybody can create that. So we have Google Pay. We have other partners who have all developed this one. And so today I can go ahead and buy anything. I don't need to carry cash. I can take my mobile phone go and buy anything in the market and do that transaction. One of the things then is that now nobody requires change. The loose coins are going out. The loose coins is also some of the biggest cost for the government in terms of minting because these these are more expensive than the currency notes. And so, so it met some things. But what the UPI has a tremendous amount of unintended consequences or in other words they also enabled a ton of innovations that are some things that we never imagined for example one of the companies now sells small speakers they charge them they don't sell them they rent them they charge 150 rupees uh, per month as rental which is two less than two pounds um, to the people who want it, whenever there's a payment, it will call out loudly. It's a voice enabled one. So, so I make a transaction, it will say, so much of money received. It will prompt this shopkeeper. So the shopkeeper doesn't have to, have to really bother about keeping track of it. It all goes in straight into his bank account. So, so transactions have gone up. 
so people are beginning to buy they don't need to bother about things and uh, so so this is an example of that innovation so that company is probably making about uh, more than a couple of million dollars every month just selling those devices rental from the devices so so i went back and then started seeing what have been the sort of things that have happened in indian in the indian market when how innovations have been there, done and i was actually struck that there have probably been four different uh uh milestones i should say the first milestone i would say was when the indian government allowed automotive companies to come in the first was suzuki um till then we had the old uh, morris Uh, cars the ambassadors that were the most popular cars and suzuki was the first one to bring in new cars and that created one wave of people trying to learn and produce parts for the automotive industry i was part of that and i this those days we were discovering or rediscovering what everyone else was doing and we were doing things at ridiculous prices so so those days i was a supplier development engineer at ford and uh, we were we were actually reverse engineering every processes every automotive uh, automotive manufacturing processes and then that created one spurt of a lot of companies coming out with things that were you know by global cost not feasible we were manufacturing things at cost that were unimaginable obviously quality was something of a concern but that was improving very very fast and those suddenly we saw so many indian companies become global suppliers of ford and gm and uh, suzuki and so on so that was one effort which lifted it the second thing that happened was the it industry we discovered something called offshoring you know it started as a simple one call centers to answer customer service calls and suddenly people discovered that this can be done for many and today that industry contributes or the it industry contributes 55% of our gdp it's massive wow. massive so so they learn to do huge amount today we are probably the back end of the world so everybody no one no one in the world does uh, has uh, there is absolutely no company in the world which doesn't have a back office in india doing things here it was i remember that ford was among the first one which completely stopped all their accounting practices everywhere else in the world and then did it in india they were doing accounting from india for every ford enterprise in the world and so that started the next wave of innovation so so people discovered what are the things can we do using the internet the access for that and so we had a then a surge of companies or surge of entrepreneurs who came up with very very different solutions the next one really started with the techno uh, with inform uh, with uh, telecommunication we didn't we jumped from wired uh when we had very poor connectivity there was a time when i remember that i didn't when i i joined my job i couldn't i had to wait for a long time to get a telephone at my home it was a wired connection so we were we didn't just have that and then we moved to mobile phones with everyone having the lowest tariffs in the world and everyone had a mobile phone and suddenly we found that there were businesses running using mobile phones and everyone uh, thanks to the smartphone and the apps that were being built and suddenly we saw an explosion of businesses that have been that uh, that never existed so so today there's sort of businesses that are existing on using the mobile phone which didn't exist for very long so so um unimaginable things so a lot of things that are uh, that are done in india using the mobile phone i don't think anywhere else in the world would be feasible so 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 today we have mobile phones in almost everybody's hands there is 
uh, there's uh, there is almost 50 percent of the uh, there we probably have about 500 uh, uh, no five uh, 500 500 I'm not sure it's close to must be 500 million connections in the country mobile phone connections and then we had this big idea coming from one of our biggest businessmen uh, Ambani but looking at uh, uh, broadband connectivity. We have the be probably the fastest broadband connections in the world at the cheapest prices. My broadband connection is at ridiculous rates by global standards, and it's as good as any in the world. And that has meant that there are businesses that have mushroomed completely using this, that are global in scale. Um, what things have so so when I looked at all of that, I found that there has always been behind all of this one groundbreaking thing that has changed, and around which all innovations have happened. So there has been a focus on creating inadvertently or on purpose, somebody creating something like the India stack or the uh, or the UPI or something, based around which everything has been built. Obviously, there have been people who have been smart enough to connect these things. Like, for example, we have uh, the India stack is an amazing thing. It's all built on one thing, the national identity card. Everyone has a national identity card, which is completely electronic. It's called the Aadhaar. Everyone has a number that is linked to the mobile phones. And today we are able to do everything around that. The payment mechanism. Yep, that's right. The Ian A A D H A R. The payment mechanism is linked to other. Our passports are linked to other. Our 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 uh, bank accounts are linked to other. Our uh, uh, income tax uh, system is linked to that. We are linked. On the COVID certificates, we have it on other. I can get, I have all my documents, whether it is my school certificates, it's my licenses, it's my permits for my car, it's the insurance policies that I have, everything linked to it. And all of that is available on a mobile phone. So somebody built uh, something called a digi locker that holds every of the document. Today, that's accepted as legal tender, uh, legal identity across the country. So I can walk in with that. So I don't need to carry papers. So everything has been so. So one one piece of thing that the government did and made it available electronically uh, through interfaces and everything else has been done around that. How does it uh, enable things, for example, I, when I file my income tax returns, I have to get a refund from the government. The refund comes in less than 30 days. My tax refund comes in less than 30 days. The government issues almost 100,000 passports a day. We get our passports on the third day of application. The third day of submission, something we have we have our passports back uh, if you submit for a renewal. So everything is enabled through one. So that's an example of how one technology allows you to build a huge amount of things uh, uh, around it. So so much of in uh, we are we are enab it enables innovation on so many other other areas. Just can leverage that, and so that's what is happening today. We are seeing that. We can do so many things. The next one that the government is trying to do is do the same for the uh, environment, sustainability. How could we enable a lot of these things? They are doing it for space. They are trying to build that the uh, if you have to become a space giant, how do we do that? They're opening up the entire thing. So they are doing going. They are trying to do it for uh, for the uh, global warming, whatever, it's so much of research is going on and uh, allow it to be out in the public domain so that 
everybody can build it i'm sure that some of those some of these sorts of solutions will come the learning for the world is exactly the same so you need across the world to identify those critical enablers and allow it to be created those big ones and then you will find enormous number of people who can leverage on that and so so one of the things that i have realized as part of innovation is about that it is not about just innovating yourself how do you create the ecosystem how do you actually marry things from around around you how can you sense things that will enable dramatic dramatic improvements to happen all around you it's just not about you doing it it's about um uh the entire system doing it so so those are some of the things that i thought would could be the sort of things to have this conversation about so how do we create ecosystems and how do we how do we enable a lot of lots of people to innovate together Brilliant, Krishna. And innovate together is a cool place to do a little segue, a little transition then. So we're into the conversation, the chat part. And I know some people will have questions, and I know I always have a couple of questions. Before we get to the Irish people's questions, uh, Anir, you've heard Krishna talk about this, and of course your own, you have your own experience of Jugad, the India stack. Would you have any comments to add or a perspective or a key phrase to add to Krishnan's take on it? um yeah very quickly um yeah i would i would give you an example of jugar which i saw more than i don't know it's, it it was in 19 uh 18 1996 i was doing my mba and for a certain project i was in punjab and uh, so in india there's a drink called lassi which is basically yogurt drink it's a thick yogurt drink and that was the first time i realized what scale production would mean uh, because i saw this guy he, he this was in the city of ludhiana and 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 he was very very famous uh, for his lassis he had strung up uh, gentlemen i kid you not six washing machines um and the washing machines were churning the milk at scale and the dispenser where you threw waste water he had converted that into a pipe which then he put into a earthen pot a big earthen pot which was his refrigerator at that point of time and he would then dispense place uh, you know you dispense the the the, the lassi from that so, so jugaad is something which is uh, really from an indian standpoint um, especially i mean krishnan is 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 um, is senior to me uh, but we come from a point where gaming the system was not something that was looked at as a wrong thing to do you game the system to survive not only survive but to you know to find out unique ways in which you got competitive advantage because there's one thing that i can tell you in all my years that i have been in india i was never the first in the line there was always 10 people before me whether you reach 1 hour before a counter opens you would have somebody who's there a day before so so that's that as far as the aadhar is concerned this is a very recent experience and i am very thankful that i am working with a friend of mine where the government of india has taken that same aadhar the unique identification number and has changed and not changed and has deployed that as a way to track maternity health for remote communities and rural uh, you know pregnant women in rural village india so um because uh, and to krishnan's point the total number of connections the mobile connections in india is 1 billion plus it's actually 1149.73 million something like that um so so that tells you that in the villages of our country where roughly about 600 odd million people stay if you split that 50% which is roughly the population split you're talking 300 million women if you take 10% of that who are getting pregnant you have a number in your mind and today um you know this is something that the project is right now on so it it will get into tracking maternity nutrition etc cetera, etc cetera, for the child and and the and and, and the mother um so 
two diverse experiences that that I've had. But there's something that Eric Schmidt had told uh, in a meeting in Google, which is very true of India. In India, anything that we do has to scale. It has to scale to, a, to an effect of impacting a billion lives. So innovation, um, you know, is 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 something that we have to do, and yep, and 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 through many ways it can be done, with or without PowerPoint. So, yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very important point that he makes. It's innovation at scale. I don't think Tesla is a great example of electric mobility because it's never going to scale. You're not going to sell vehicles that cost hundred thousand, eighty thousand dollars to the global, uh, the to the global masses. You're going to sell vehicles that cost $8,000. How do you make vehicles at $8,000? Those solutions are not going to come from Tesla. Those solutions are going to come from- they Come from Tata. I'm not sure Tata's Tata has the capability to do that. They tried to do it before, making the $2,000 car, mm. which didn't work. But I'm sure that there are boys out in the universities and colleges today who are working and they are not going to be cars. And I'm also certain that the mobility solution of this world is not a car, is yeah. not something that is going to resemble the Tesla. Where is it going to come from? They are going to come from maybe Africa, maybe India, anywhere. The, those are people who are going to do that. And so, so anything that we do as an innovation is something that's going to be at scale. And that's going to be something that shocks people because the scale that we talk about. There was an article today uh, which said um, we have, the, it talked about the number of millionaires and billionaires in India. And just to give you a perspective, uh, it says that there are about uh, a few hundred thousand million or close to a million and a half millionaires and about 15,000 billionaires in India. Wow. That's a scale that we are talking about. Amazing. And so, and so we have <clears throat> so many more people aspiring to do that. Fantastic, Krishnan. So we got a really good scale from you and from Anir of the scale and some great examples of Jugad, the Indian stack, the Aadhaar, and the uh, the other elements of what is working in India and why it's working and the unique advantages of India. Um, I know there are some questions out there. I'm going to start with Catherine because uh, you did put a question up in the chat a few minutes ago. Yeah, no, that's I mean, I, I'm I, I again, I'm probably creating limitations in my, in my brain and they're the ones that come up here around, you know, you, Krishnan, you mentioned that the the, the all of the systems being digital, you can't, you know, your your passport, your this, your that, your in terms of your application. And certainly that's what we aspire to. But then we come up against data protection challenges, um, privacy and civil liberty challenges that seem to be constraints slash excuses slash reasons for not doing it. And, you know, insert any word that you choose, depending on your perspective. Um, so what is the prevailing political and innovation culture, would you say, in India that allows that scale to happen? I think I think that's a very interesting one. Uh, I don't think there's any political party in the country who is not pro innovation. So everyone is wanting to innovate. So every government of every every color whether they are the left wing or the right wing are supporting innovation. That's number one. But what as a nation we have also realized is that we can never get things perfect. We need to experiment and do it extremely fast. Yeah. And so so, so the Aadhaar system that we have has probably gone through multiple iterations already. It was. It yeah. had the same thing. People were complaining that this is this problem, this problem, and we have continuously tried to refine it. And today, I think it has come to a stage where it is robust, but it wasn't robust when it started. But that fear cannot stop you from doing it. So you will see that in India, people don't bother about 
getting things perfect and we will launch it. Yeah. Okay. Great. If only we could happen that have that uh, here. It'd be great. Yeah. And just just to add to that, Catherine, um, with Abhar, actually there are public litigation cases that were filed with the Supreme Court of India on the same topic that you just mentioned on privacy and et cetera. Et cetera. But the but the thing is that the Supreme Court gave a judgment which said that you know while the the, it is instructed to the government to look at it. They did not stop the process of innovation because I think everyone in India, and as Krishnan rightly said, everyone in India realizes that to impact 1.4 billion people is no other option but to innovate in scale. And we will never get it right. So pivoting is something that Indians do very fast yeah. um, to push these things out and, and, and do it in scale. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Alan, I think you're up next. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to ask, and the, the example of Aadhaar was one that definitely is, is relevant to what I'm going to ask. It's around um, the role of government in being a, a prime mover in lots of innovation, because, you know, the, the Aadhaar thing, for example, um, is a great platform for doing other things on. So as you gave the example of someone using it for, for healthcare data on a public database, I mean, it's probably one of the largest public tracking experimental databases on the face of the planet. Um, you know, the other thing that I do seem to recall from working with Indians at the time was this demonetization where they just decided a particular value of rupee note was going to just disappear. Lots of guys on my team decided that they would urgently need to take annual leave and go home and deal with certain urgent situations involving money that really wasn't um, uh, as well hidden as they thought it was up until it was just about to become devalued. Um, like I love the idea of the scale of the state intervention in Indian things. I know, you know, one of my pet interests is, is sustainability and, you know, trying to get people in the general population to move really, really quickly. And, you know, we have lots of very nice democratic processes and planning applications and, and judicial things that happen in this part of the world. In India, it seems to me that the state has has repeatedly taken a very decisive, very strong position and just said, "Okay, look, we're doing this. Whatever number of whatever number of people uh, this impacts, we're just going to go for it on a scale that we would find almost maybe a little uncomfortable in this part of the world." Um, I think it's just a mindset. I think generally, it, Indian citizens are very comfortable with a very big hand of government making very big interventions in their lives. Uh, is that, am I getting that right? I mean, I, th I think I am, but it's interesting to see how you accept that as a population rather than, you know, here, if you try demonetizing something or, you know, for for, for tax reasons or or giving everyone national identity, has that has been proposed in Ireland and there have been significant scale of protests. So that's the kind of very, very contrasting how you go about things in that part of the world. Uh, we are accommodating and forgiving. <laughs> I agree. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, the, the government the is forgiven <laughs> for its mistakes. Uh, Everyone says, is, oh, yeah. they didn't have a choice. It's OK. True. True, so, true. So we are very good at and doing I think, that. Uh, yeah. I, I also think that something which has happened in India after a very long time is over the last 10 years, yes, there are multiple narratives. But in for the sake of the discussion, we would like to stick to the narrative of of taking initiative and getting things done. I think this government over the last eight years has demonstrated rightly or wrongly that it, it takes the initiative to start something. So yes, one fine evening, the prime minister comes and says, from midnight, these number denominations would just disappear. Go figure out your life. That was the biggest you know, booster to what Krishnan was saying, UPI and PTM and stuff like that. We need to get into Aadhaar, otherwise you will not get your, you know, stuff that is there. Line up, gentlemen, take pictures, get the card, start moving. So yes, there is a, there is that bit of, you know, um, and I agree that in, in probably in 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 far more developed, um, you know, the West Western Hemisphere, these might be seen as uh, rude things to do or or probably not acceptable. But again, as I said, in India, anything that you do is improving life. So. The the bar of doing that has been now set. And so people now expect 
these kind of things to happen. And as, as Krishnan said, one of our, our philosophies in life is do it and ask for forgiveness later. That's it. So it's as simple as that. You just end, do it. Don't ask permission. Just ask for forgiveness. That's been something that has been <laughs> told to me many times by my bosses as well. You know, get it done. And that's it. We'll figure out what happens later. So that's uh, where we are. Thanks very much. So I know Catherine has a question on chat, but I'm going to ask Frank to come in just with a comment and then we'll go to Catherine's question on chat. Well, just, just to kind of a shared thing, because I'm a history geek, the Irish language is the closest language in Europe to Sanskrit. So we have a bunch of words that are exactly the same in meaning and sound. So she, as in Banshee, uh, means exactly the same in Sanskrit, which is the enlightened one. So uh, we, we, we're from the same gang, which is good. I think the, the biggest interesting thing, I think, is the uh, cultural dissonance um, in Europe. Catherine kind of screamed it. It's about the individual. I think in India, it's about the collective more than the individual. That's that's my sense. And that's probably the, the biggest difference in terms of the environment, the environment for innovation. So. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm fa I'm fascinated. Like I basically I've been my hands are sore from writing. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I have so many things to research after this. So thank you, much appreciated. Fantastic. Now I chose I chose to turn to Frank very unfairly, but it was because he was first into the chat with uh, Krishna and me. So thank you for that, Frank. Good reference there, Anya. Thank you very much. Now, Catherine, your question on chat was: Is there an Indian government innovation agency? Yeah, and specifically. So we have an enterprise agency, right? But it kind of does support business in, in some way, right? But, and I'm, full disclosure, I'm also on, on, on the Irish Public Service Innovation Board and um, trying to, you know, develop that sense of having a go, taking a risk and, you know, trying to say, build that culture of, um, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's, you know, it just has to be done. Um, so I want to kind of be able to reference as many international practices as possible. Now, obviously, we're talking about, again, to Frank's point, cultural differences, but also scaling differences. But it's also it's very instructional to be able to say, and in India, they did this and this was the impact and that was the effect. Because if you're coming with stories and credibility, albeit in different contexts, but it sometimes minimizes the initial conversation and prevents the row starting. Because I bring up stuff and I won't lie, the initial reaction from the from the public servants is, oh, my God, no, there'll be a freedom of information request on that. Oh, no, 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 no. We couldn't do that because, oh, no, 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 no. Th this would be brought up in Parliament. And I'm like, so? Um, yeah. But any any examples or good good references you could point us to? Um, well, that's a very I, interesting question. The number of agencies that are responsible for innovation is countless. Government okay. departments. Okay, so we have something called the Niti Aayog, which is basically our planning commission under which all innovation comes through. But apart from that, there are hundreds of missions. So. Under the Prime Minister's office, there is an Invest India mission. There is an there is a mission called Agni, A-G-N-I-I, -I, which is again um, a mission for promoting innovation. There are hundreds of there are every ministry is promoting innovation in its area. Every state government has uh, has an agency that's promoting innovation. So, so there is no shortage of people that are uh, supposed to do that. And in fact, in fact, one of the gentlemen that was supposed to join today was a guy called Sanit Patel, and I will connect you, Catherine, to him. Sanit works in the government in one of those agencies. He's responsible for this. He's a vice Brilliant. president. He's a vice president in that. So, so he wants to connect with one of you to learn about how how things can be. And so, so, so. That guy is one of the hundreds of bureaucrats that are working on this one. OK, so so there's plenty of things that have been created. 
it's not easy and as i said we are experimenting there's no shortage of experiments because ne- no one knows what is going to work so yeah. but that's not stopping us from doing things so it's the idea is never been to get things perfect we're trying to do lots of things so so the government is shutting down programs every every year but we are not bothered about shutting it down so it's calmly shut down nobody bothers about it but we create that so so there's so many of these missions and uh, some of them are more successful than the others and some of the it's all politically uh, it all goes with the leadership of the individual so so there's plenty of things happening uh, so yeah and uh, there is uh, no no lack of ambition let me put it that way they might lack the methods but they don't lack ambition and you need ambition first yep yeah yep brilliant krishna and anubhav that's fantastic we're not quite at the end but we're coming close we're at we are kind of at the last call for questions joe because you were second in what did you think yeah. what's what's uppermost yeah. in your mind yeah look i think it's absolutely makes it's fascinating i love what the country has done to support the innovation and i think it's something that ireland may you could argue have been better at back in the day like what 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 innovation comes out of necessity uh versus you know because ireland is a country and i grew up i was born in 81 my parents lost their business a lot of people lost their business in the 80s ireland had i was in in more you could argue was more innovative then because it had to be right and similarly with with india you've got obviously a rising demographic of the population that you spoke about but but necessity around the innovation for people to actually feed themselves and 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 climb up the social value chain is really really uh, an interesting thing that I'd love to get your take on but just to finish on that I think what's really what we're hearing strongly is the government has put everything in place at an equal footing that people can take advantage of the same and and I think that's something that um is probably underestimated uh, in terms of if you set the foundation and people are matched with the ambition to to do something innovative and grow together they're a powerful force and that's and i think mm-hmm. ireland has put 100%. in place more more things to stop that growth like like gdpr it, it, we love hiding behind it we used to work with the technology team in pru and the legal people used to always say the same thing privacy and compliance everyone def- oh they'll say no in which case we just won't do it so i'd love to get your take on the necessity and and how much uh, that's driven the innovation but but understanding the foundations being set by the government <clears throat> a couple of things that the government is also changing direction let, uh, let me put it this way today the government believes and rightly so that innovation is going to happen by training young minds so so the government is focused all the efforts and education efforts on innovation at schools and universities so so there are the government is sponsoring mentors they are inviting mentors to come in and teach them they are funding a lot of these sorts of missions to do that create those sorts of things they are setting up centers where they will have 3d printers and what not and the sort of facilities that enable that they are actually right now developing the curriculum for taking innovation education to secondary schools okay so there is a lot of those sorts of things so so now so far there's mm-hmm. never there's never been process we have not been process oriented about innovation so we have left it to the bright minds who are once they they just are doing it but today now the government says no let's train people on innovation so there's hu- humongous amount of education that is focused on innovation so so there's i don't think there's any business school in india which does not have a curriculum on innovation i teach it in university and there are more people asking me to do that every every university every college has a accelerator today in the country funded by the government um so i think they want the word to take it to school used in in this our sorry krishnan is platform so if you take the platform idea along with the where india is not being process oriented they are providing identifying opportunity spaces and within the opportunity space they're fixing on opportunities i'm going to use an american analogy excuse me apologies in advance so the darpa is not a perfect analog but there's a case where we've got money 
and a couple of framing ideas, and then we get out of the way. India is doing something very similar in a very different context where we have huge need and we'll help people to innovate in that space and we'll get out of the way. Yeah, just expanding on that. In fact, DARPA is a very, very topical example, especially today, because India's first privately owned rocket company startup, they had their maiden flight today. So I think what the government has done, uh, as Krishnan was saying, is the government has identified areas and then opened it up to either private uh, partnerships as well as what the government is pushing through education and funds and stuff like that. So space is one of the areas. Um, it is it, most people don't realize that India is one of the largest investors in solar power technology globally. The per square foot solar power panels that India produces and has today matches the the best. In fact, it overtakes China in many many situations. But it's a very you know it's it's those things are happening at at at, at a level. Um, not much of it is publicized yet, but it it still happens. So it's basically in India, it's always. It's always been either bottom up, not much top down, but now the government has managed to strike a synergy where there is requisite push top down to identify sectors and making things easy. I think that is very important. The ease of doing business today in India is phenomenally better than what it was a decade ago. You know, that's why if you go and ask India, I think about six or seven out of every 10 people coming out from the colleges today would say, I would like to do a startup. I would like to do something on my own. The generational shift of working for a uh, multinational company or a big Indian company as opposed to Scott. entrepreneurship driving this is a phenomenal springboard that has happened in India over the last 15 to 20 years. You know, I, I, I was the first batch which graduated when India was opened its economies out. So, you know, we 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 took that, we moved forward. All subsequent generations which came from that have all benefited from that. And, and that's the biggest, I think that's the biggest delta I would identify where you, it, you have this. I've developed something called the nine stages of innovation. Uh, yes. And the first person that is buying it is a school. They want me to run that for grade 10, 11 and 12 students. They want me to run that for them. So they told me that, Chris, that? Uh, that's uh, kids of uh, 14, 15, 16. So they want to want me to teach their kids. The school says, Krish, we might not be able to pay you. But, mm -hmm. you know, some of these, if something happens here, you will get obviously visible. That's very interesting. So so I, I have no problem. I will go and do that and maybe you will they will discover that somebody, some kid there creates something new. Mm -hmm. And that's the sort of thing that is happening. Schools are doing it at secondary grade levels. That's where innovation is being pushed today. Mm. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen to that. Now, on that word, amen. We're pretty much at the end of our window. Krishnan, is there anything that you felt that should have been said that was left unsaid? Uh, as I told you, the nine stages of innovation, I think uh, my effort has been that, again, it is scale thinking. It is not is not about that, uh, not about uh, putting it to a uh, few and charging a lot of things. I have, I have actually opened it up, said anybody can use this and come back and use it and do that. And so it's the same to all of you. Try and do that. It's uh, I think uh, Ian has actually put it. So anybody can go and do and assess their innovation projects using that. So I developed it as a method of saying, how do people do market development along with offer development? So so it's a sort of a tool to help people figure out where they are. So, so that's something that I would like all of you to try and see if you can provide me any feedback about refining it. We want to create a platform for innovation. That's sensible. <laughs> We don't yeah. want Krishna and getting rich, rich on our backs, do we? Or maybe we do, but at least yeah. we can have a look. We can have a look. I see you all as partners in collaborating and creating that. Maybe, maybe I will make money when people log into it, and you will make money when people buy consulting out of it. 
OK, brilliant, Krishnan. Anirban, thank you very much for your contributions. Everybody else? I have one request, though. I, I, I really wanted to, at some other session maybe, it would be great to hear innovation projects or opportunity areas or, or examples that you guys have in Ireland. Um, yeah, because I, I believe that, you know, that there is no lack of inspiration, uh, big, small, whatever. So um, that would be great uh, if we can have a session like that. That's a great idea, Anirban. We will take up that challenge. It sounds like it's right up our street with this group and a couple more, a little bit of a different mix, and we'll see how that goes. Most people today get, did get to have a word either uh, with their voice or on chat. Thank you very much. If we left anybody out, if there's a burning question, stick it up on chat. We will come back to it. And we all already have great invitation from Anir to pick up this subject with, with the mirror flipped around for, for next time round. So, ladies and gentlemen, today only one lady, Catherine. What's going I on? I know. Yeah. But I'm, what, what am I in Sanskrit, Frank? Am I I'm elevated or something fabulous? I think she, she is good. I'm taking that. You've yeah, yeah. It's better than a banshee there, Catherine. Correct. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yes, I'll take whatever's it's, going. It's a level above banshee. You're not you're not haunting people, so fair play to you. That's <laughs> arguable. That is very much arguable today now. So I have to thank ask you very much, wife. folks. Very interesting. I have to ask my wife about the Sanskrit uh, meaning of that. Uh, she would be extremely interested because she's a big fan of Sanskrit and teaches Sanskrit to children. Because yeah, tread carefully now, Krishna. And just just on the subject of banshees, I'd say tread carefully. It could be a limiting <laughs> conversation in terms of your marriage <laughs> harmony. On that Thank subject, you so much, gentlemen. Let me just say that next week we've got a coffee stop, and the following week we're doing what how to make innovation stick. But on the ninth, Frank, who is with us today, is leading a session on Irish culture and innovation and the unique positive links there. So Krishnan and Anirban, you're welcome back for that. And that we will okay. develop that Banshee and the Sanskrit Irish connection that day as well. So meanwhile, enjoy your weekend, everybody. Thank you very much Thank for today. Thank you, everybody. Thank Talk you. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.